Is the demand for full stack web developers dying? Are no cool tools like Webflow and Wix are taking over? And what about AI? Will it replace developers? These are the big question everyone is asking. But here's the truth. AI and no code tools are only replacing average developers, not the skilled one. Businesses especially in e-commerce and B2B need high performing, scalable and visually stunning websites. And no AI tool can match the creativity and problem solving abilities of a skilled full stack developer. In fact, the demand is still booming. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, employment in this field is expected to grow by 16% from 2022 to 2032. A survey by Stack Overflow found that 50% of developers identify as a full stack because they can handle everything from designing user interface to managing databases and backend logic. And if you are wondering about job opportunities, just check platforms like LinkedIn, Glassdoor and Nokri where there are over 10,000 plus jobs opening for full stack developers at different experience levels. And salaries, they range from 1.8 LPA to 15.4 LPA, making this is a highly rewarding career. Think about it, every day you use app like Instagram, Swiggy or Netflix. But have you ever wondered how they actually work? Who designed the sleek interface? Who ensure that your data is stored and retrieved instantly? And that is where a full stack developer comes in. They manage front-end, what you see and interact with, back-end, the logic that process your request, and databases, where all your data is securely stored. But here's the catch. Many beginners get stuck in an endless loop of learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript without ever becoming job-ready. If you want to stay ahead of AI and secure your future, you need to follow a solid roadmap. That's exactly what I'm going to give you in this video. By the end of this video, you will be having a clear step-by-step -step guide on how to become a full-stack web developer. But before we dive in, let's first understand who is a full-stack web developer and what does full-stack web development means. So full-stack web developer is someone who can build both front-end, what user sees and interact with, and back-end, the logic, database, and server-side functions of a website or web application. In simple term, we can say that they handle everything from designing a web page to making sure that it works smoothly behind the scenes. So full-stack web development refers to the process of developing both the client-side and server-side of a web application. It includes working with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for the front-end and back-end technologies like Node.js, Python, or Java, handling databases like MySQL or MongoDB, and finally deploying the application to make it accessible online. Now in this video, we will go through five important steps that will help you become a full-stack web developer from scratch. So let's get started. So as you can see here on the screen that web development consists of two parts, that is front-end development and back-end development. Front-end, which includes everything on the screen and whatever you interact with. Back-end consists of everything behind the scene. And they both together make full-stack development. So step one is imagine you visit an online store. The very first thing you see is the home page, product listing and search bar. The buttons that allow you to add items in your cart. All of this is a part of a front-end the user-facing side of the website that focuses on design and user experience. To build a front-end, we use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML, which basically structures the page, defines how the headers, paragraph, list, and content will look like. It serves as the skeleton of any website. Now, have you ever noticed how buttons change color when you hover or images zoom in? And that's where CSS or cascading style sheet comes in. They add animation and interactive effects to make browsing smooth and engaging. Plus, it ensures that sites work perfectly on mobile by adjusting layout for different screen. So now in HTML, you can learn basic HTML structure, HTML tags, form structure, selector, and semantic HTML. In CSS, you can go by box modeling, padding, properties, flex, and CSS selector. CSS makes it visually appealing by adding colors and styling, dynamic effects, and all the animation and transition which you see on the screen is because of that CSS only. So when it comes to CSS framework, you have two popular choices, which is Bootstrap and Tailwind. If you want a quick pre-style design, go for Bootstrap, which is great for beginner with ready-made components. But if you need flexibility and customization, Tailwind CSS is better, lightweight, and lets you style with the utility classes. And then comes the JavaScript, a scripting language that brings your e-commerce site to a life. While HTML structures the page and CSS makes it look good, JavaScript makes it interactive, allowing you to add items to your cart instantly, filter products smoothly, and get live searches suggestion as you type. 
It also handles all the math behind the scene, calculating discounts, taxes, and the tools in real time at checkouts. It is basically brain behind the action. So in JavaScript, go on by studying loops, promises, callbacks, asynchronous and synchronous programming, operators, and DOM manipulations. Now that we have covered the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, it's important to learn a framework or library to build modern dynamic website efficiently. Basic web development alone isn't enough to create fast, interactive, and user-friendly application. And developers rely on framework and libraries like React, Angular, or Vue.js. These tools help in building smooth and responsive user interfaces, ensuring a seamless shopping experience for users. They make development faster by providing structured component and optimizing performance, making them essential for any aspiring web developer. And if you're new to this, I would recommend start with React.js. It's beginner friendly, has a huge community and is widely used in the industry. React's components-based approach makes it easier to build and manage UI element and its virtual DOM ensure better performance. The entire learning process can take around 2.5 to 3 months and you can refer to resources like W3School, MDN WebDocs or YouTube tutorials for the guidance. Big tech companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft and Netflix along with countless startups and digital agencies are always on lookout for the skilled front-end developers. And if you are keeping up with the latest trend, you are already ahead of the game. JavaScript framework like React, Vue, and AngularJS are everywhere, so mastering them is must. So in React.js, you can go on by studying props, state, hooks, and React.js components. Now, learning the entire front-end will take some time, but once you have got a good grasp, it's time for us to move on to our next step, which is implementation. There's no point in jumping straight to back-end development without practicing what you have learned. So focus on building small projects using your front-end skill. You can create clones of e-commerce sites like Amazon or Flipkart, build a portfolio website, or even develop a basic e-commerce platform to apply your knowledge. Now, once you feel confident in front-end development, it's time for the third step, which is back-end development. The backend handles everything behind the scenes from processing user data to manage databases and ensuring everything runs smoothly. Without it, a website is a just a collection of static pages. Now, let's say a customer clicks the Add to Cart button. How does the website know that which product they selected or update the cart and process the payment? That's where the backend comes in. The backend is the logic behind the website, handling user authentication, order processing, and database interaction. It ensures that when a user logs in, they see their order history, or when they buy a product, the stock updates automatically. We have popular backend technologies like Node.js with Express.js for JavaScript developer, Django or Flux for those who love Python, and Spring Boot for Java developers. On the server side, we have languages like JavaScript, Node.js, Python, Java, PHP, Ruby, and C Sharp to handle databases, authentication, and business logic. And if you're a beginner, I would recommend starting with Node.js since it uses JavaScript, making the transition from front-end to back-end is much smoother. Start with basics of Node.js, understanding the event-driven architecture and asynchronous programming. Then move on to NPM, which is also known as Node Package Manager for managing dependencies. And Express.js is a popular framework for building APIs. Learn about routing, middleware, and database integration with MongoDB or MySQL. Security is crucial, so focus on authentication using JWT or Auth. Also explore file handling, web sockets for real-time communication and deployment on platform like AWS. So these frameworks help developer build API that allow front-end and back-end to communicate. So now that we have learned the framework and languages for backend development, it's the time to move to our fourth step, which is integrating backend with a database, which is integrating backend with database. So every time a new user signs up, an order is placed, right? Or an item is added to the cart. The information needs to be stored somewhere and that's where database comes in. Database are used to store product details, user account, order history, and payment record. And we have two main type of databases, which is SQL, also known as relational or NoSQL, which is also known as non-relational database. In SQL, we have MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite, and Oracle database to store data in structured table. 
these are great when you need to maintain relationship between data like keeping track of user and their order in an e-commerce site. Then comes NoSQL also known as non-relational database. We have MongoDB and CouchDB which are more flexible and better suited for handling large amount of unstructured data such as user activity, logs or real-time analytics. So when you should learn what? If you're building application with complex relationship like uh, banking system or e-commerce start by SQL, but if you're working on scalable data heavy application like social media or IoT system, no SQL is way to go. Apart from these traditional databases, cloud-based database management system like Firebase, AWS, DynamoDB and Azure CosmoDB provide scalable and hassle-free solution. These platforms handle hosting, scaling and security, making them perfect for modern applications that need real-time updates, global accessibility and minimal maintenance. So if you're working with structured data relationship, go for SQL. But if your focus is on scalability and high performance, no SQL or cloud-based databases are the way to go. Okay, so after these four steps, we have covered 90% of full stack knowledge. Now we move to step five, which is deployment and hosting. Once our website is built, we need to make it accessible to user. This is where deployment comes in. It ensures that our site is live, scalable and secure, allowing people to visit it anytime. But before deployment, it's crucial to use version control system like Git and GitHub. These tools help track changes, collaborate with others and revert to previous version if needed, making deployment smoother and more organized. For hosting the front end, platform like Vercel and Netlify make deployment super simple. The backend can be hosted on AWS, Azure, or DigitalOcean, depending on project's need. For databases, cloud-based solutions like MongoDB, Atlas, or Firebase help manage data efficiently. But deployment isn't just about making a website live. It's also about handling traffic and securities. So tools like Dockers and Kubernetes ensure your website can scale smoothly and handle thousands of users without crashing. So apart from these five steps, I need you all to focus on some additional skills that will make you well-rounded full-stack developers. APIs or application programming interfaces are crucial because they allow different software systems to communicate with each other, whether it's fetching data from third-party service or connecting your front-end to your back-end. When working with APIs, you will come across REST API and SOAP API, two major protocols REST is lightweighted and widely used for web services while SOAP is more structured and secure, often used in enterprise application. Understanding networking is also important since web applications rely on servers and data transport. Knowing how requests and responses work, how DNS resolves domain name and how load balancing help manage traffic will give you a strong technical edge. Then there is this Linux, a skill many developers overlook, but one that plays a big role in managing server, handling command line operation efficiently. Being comfortable with Linux command can make debugging and server management much easier. Finally, there comes the data structures and algorithm. Are fundamental to writing efficient code, they help optimize performance, improve problem solving, and prepare you for technical interviews. Concepts like arrays, linked list, recursion, and sorting algorithm are heavily tested in coding interviews. So having a good understanding of DSA will open up a better job opportunities. By mastering these additional skills, you will not only build functional website, but also create optimized, scalable, and secure application, making you a strong, confident full stack developer. Plus the roadmap for the same is attached in the link given below in the description. If you have liked this video, kindly hit the like and subscribe button for IntelliParts YouTube channel. Thank you and see you in the next video.